It's round and it's coming your way. Cricket next on ESPN Classic. Yeah. That is the nature of the task facing the England tail. 51 runs still needed to avoid an innings defeat. Uh, but of course, should they get the 51, Australia have 10, indeed 11 batsmen who would apparently be more than capable of knocking off the run. So it's Lily with the first ball after tea. And oh, what a splendid shot. Very wide. Very well pitched up, and Graham Dilly continuing his successful policy before tea. And as we were saying, if there's a little bit of wit, this young man gives it the full treatment. As we said before tea, the well-known flat batter. Yes, the feet don't go, but the blade certainly does. Lily bowls to Dilly. Ray Bright fielding that one and still wondering if he's ever going to get a bowl in this match on a pitch which is probably almost certain, I would think, to help him. I think Lily knew it was fairly optimistic. Not a bad shout at all. Not a bad shout. coming confidently back for the second he's enjoying himself Splendid shot, and that brings up the 50 partnership. And it's come in only 39 minutes, and well might uh, Ian Botham say to Graham Dilly, well played. yet another one square I don't think it's likely to happen but uh, Garfield Sobers started his test career as a number nine batsman uh, I don't think Graham Dilley will qu quite get that far but he's certainly wielding the willow very positively at the moment or well, perhaps uh, seeing the size of Dilley and knowing his county Frank Woolley might be a possible model for him to aim for. So it's reduced England's deficit to 41.
Yep, that's beaten him. Four more. Well, the Headingley crowds of the last few days have not had a great deal to chair in the way of batsmanship, and certainly not in the way of English batsmanship. This is really a most remarkable shot. <laughs> it's almost as though he, he lifts it up there. Oh. And that looked as though it had to be four runs off the inside edge. And it's the second time he's made out of this world stop. This really is a brilliant piece of wicket keeping. He's on the way down the offside and over he goes. Certain four runs saved there. He's a tremendous performer these days. Oh, beautiful show. Beautiful show. And the, if the other one was unorthodox, that was uh, a classic cut. This is a beautifully timed shot, guarding it down there, following the straight through. Perfectly placed. And England really rushing on at the moment. Only 33 runs behind. Not so lucky this time. And almost every occasion that Ian Both has played that square cut outside the off stump and missed it. He's pulled his front foot away, and so he's pulling his body away from the line of the ball. And Alderman finally drawing a defensive shot out of Ian Botham. Four, four, seventy-three. Well, whatever anybody may feel about Ian Botham and uh, the rights or wrongs of being his being captain, surely there isn't any doubt that he is looking a freer and more simply more carefree young player, and he has had a great match. Top score in both innings and six wickets in the first innings. And uh, carrying on along that theme, he looks a little bit younger as well. All the tension has gone out of him, and he's enjoying playing his cricket again. just in case anybody in Australia is getting worried or anybody in England over optimistic the weather forecast for tomorrow is good Tremendous blow through the covers. 
and round the wicket or over the wicket. They're coming all the light to Graham Dilley at the moment, and that now is his highest test score for England. 39 not out. Action replay from the last over. So now only two slips, and one of those covers is going right out on the boundary by the look of it, too. But not just, perhaps, in a defensive position. Border about ten yards could be in a catching position. And it's got beyond a joke as far as Dennis Lilly is concerned. If indeed it ever was a joke. So Dilly improving his average, that's up to the moment. He got uh, his highest score originally in his very first test innings when he got 38 at Perth. That was a no ball. And he got uh, 16 in the second innings of that, his first test match at Perth, and batted for a long time in both innings, and particularly in the second innings, in a losing cause not dissimilar to this one. Although in that, on that occasion he, he uh, batted defensively for a long period. So there's no doubt that he has the ability. And he brings up the 200. To a great cheer from this uh, Yorkshire crowd who are relieved to see the home team at least putting up a fight here. And these two came together when the seventh wicket fell at 135. I think Dennis Lilly is going on to his shorter run. No, he isn't. No, he's going right back. But, uh, as I say, since T, they've sprayed the ball about a bit, and so have the England batsmen. And there's another one. Thunderous blow. A cynical voice said a moment ago, a pity he didn't bowl as well as this. Two hundred and seven for seven. And uh, there is going to be a change of bowling, but it's not going to be bright. No, there isn't no change of bowling either, beg your pardon, it's uh, Alderman carrying on. Alderman coming up for his twenty-eighth. Over. And not quite where he intended, but it brings him his 50 nonetheless. His second 50 of the match, and that broad smile. Conveying the old sense of enjoyment. and of a brilliantly talented, carefree cricketer with a fairly meaty inside edge on his bat. His 50 in the first innings came off 50 balls. This one has come off 57 balls in 111 minutes. And as with his first innings, he's hit eight fours. himself around there.
magnificent shot. There was nothing wrong with that ball at all. And Ian Botham just launching himself at this. Didn't get his foot across, but it didn't matter. <laughs> Really crashed that through. We've seen some fine strokes. Fine strokes from these two. And Barry Mayer, the umpire there, I think having a slightly angry word with the crowd because he feels that perhaps one or two of the papers that are blowing across are deliberate, but also that uh, the crowd there should have kept back and waited for that ball to go across the rope for four. Safely over the top of Hughes's head. And a bit of a risky blow that, but uh, he's got away with it. I think he hit this one somewhere near the splice. But he's such a powerful man. And he carried Deepish Mid on. So just eight needed now to make Australia bat again. Oh, now it's four needed. Three fours in a row and... <laughs> the last two owing a bit to luck, but... Uh, He's really having a lovely time, and so the crowd. Good Sunday league shot, this. Overslip. Four runs all the way. There's Ian Botham's test match record with the bat. Averaging almost 31 and a half in innings with 600s and 650s. And two years ago, he scored a, almost a, scored 100 before lunch here against India. to try to restore order, bows to delay. 